From the studios in beautiful Oceanport, New Jersey, welcome to the biggest and greatest podcast ever. I'm your host, Ray Kay. Hey guys, another version of Catching Up with Ray K. I'm losing track of the versions, but I think we're up around 15 or 16. Had an exciting week over the last seven days. I'd like to talk about a few of the things that have happened to me. Then I'm going to talk about on my fun section, my uh, three things I miss most about the NFL. Because the NFL is going to be starting up in preseason this week, and then the regular season starts in several weeks. And it's going to be a pretty cool year, I could tell, because my team's going to be good. But let me talk about my a couple things that happened to me, uh, which are positive, actually. I'll talk about my trip to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and how that all happened. It was a one-day trip. We planned it for about three weeks. I made a promise to go fishing with my son, and a couple days before, he reminded me of that. And so we took off on a Friday, and I... Um, Friday night, no, wait a minute, it was a Thursday night into Friday because I figured the best time to travel on a trip to Massachusetts from New Jersey is nighttime because the traffic is light, I would think, and uh, it's just uh, for a five or six hour trip, you don't want traffic, you know, because you don't want that to turn into a 10 hour trip. So we decided to leave at around 11 o'clock on Thursday night. And would you believe when we hit the George Washington Bridge, there was a huge backup on the upper uh, you know, the upper road of the bridge, uh, the upper section. And it took about 45 minutes to get over that bridge. Uh, trucks all over the place. So if you travel late at night, go on the lower side of the bridge, the, you know, the lower end of the bridge, whatever they call it, the lower bridge, because all the trucks have to go on the top of the bridge. So I was on the top of the bridge. So once we got through the tunnel, it was basically smooth sailing. I stopped about four times because, you know, you get tired. It's late at night. You're not sleeping. And I noticed it helps when there's traffic when you drive long distances. Uh, it just keeps you alert. You don't want a lot of traffic, but you want you do want some cars around you so you're you're alert and you're looking around and you're making moves and you're looking in your re- rear view mirror. With no cars out there, it's it's um you know, it lulls it lulls you and you could definitely get sleepy with no cars. So I, I like when there's some cars. Connecticut is a great spot for rest stops. I mean, they got the best rest stops. Uh, it's much better than New Jersey. I mean, they're all uniform. They all look the same, modernized. Everything's open even at two or three in the morning. So I did my stops and there's there's one every about 15 or 20 miles. Um, some were 10 miles apart. So it was pretty, pretty close. And I took advantage of the closeness of it because, you know, I have my coffee. I know I noticed too, food keeps you up. I got a little bit tired and I stopped and I got a Coke, a cola, which is great for caffeine. I mean, that that helps me more than coffee, actually. So I had a few a nice large, and you know how how those large sizes go, those supersized Cokes. And they kind of help you get to the next two hours, you know. So, And I, I got a double cheeseburger, and that kind of really woke me up. You know, you would think food makes you sleepy, but, but boy, these cheeseburgers, I mean, you're eating, you, it kind of energizes you. So that kind of helped me get a few more hours. Now, once you get four hours into the trip, I had two more to go. And then once you hit Massachusetts, you know, in Rhode Island into Massachusetts, there's no rest stops. You know, you have to go off the road and then you got to find like a McDonald's or something like three miles off the exit, but it's not on that roadway. So that was a little rough because now we're talking about four in the morning, you're getting a little tired and nothing's open. You know, get, yeah, they say a gas stop. I, I took a shot and went off the road and nothing was open. You know, not even not even the McDonald's or any any shops. The gas stations were closed. So make sure you get a full tank of gas before you leave because you don't want to take any chances of these things not being open, especially as you get into Rhode Island and these sections that aren't too populated, you know. But anyway, I, I made it good. I, I actually found a place like a 24-hour 7-Eleven equivalent, and a guy was really nice right at the end of Rhode Island. And I got a nice big Coke, and or, or was it coffee? I think I got both. I think I got both of them. And that kind of cruised me in for the last hour and 15 minutes. So we got into Cape Cod about... 4:45 a.m. and I noticed there was we were right by the canal, which is where all the stripers apparently were. And man, where there were a lot of them because there were cars all over the canal, parked everywhere you looked. And we went in to get some bait, and the the, the owner of the tackle shop said that 
these guys have been out here since three in the morning, getting in position and getting ready to fish, you know, because I guess it was a change of tide was coming up and that, that helps the fishing. My son knows all this stuff. I'm, I'm learning. So they were all there early and uh, we got there at 445, which was on a later end of it because the tide was just turning, but, but we hit it good because we caught about six stripers. I had some nice pictures. Um, you know, I, I went, I actually took a little nap from driving as my son fished and then I went to get a little breakfast at one of those nice New England uh, breakfast places. And boy, New England's a nice place. Classic New England Cape Cod. Cape Cod's big. It wasn't, you know, Hyannis Port is where the Kennedy compound is. And that was about 18 miles away. So it's, it's kind of long. I thought it would be like right there where we were. But it was about 18 miles away. I didn't have time to go see it. So it was very, very, everybody was friendly. Everybody was nice. It was that, that, that nice New England type of friendliness, you know, even in the supermarket. Everybody was friendly, you know, which was where I went to to buy some things and, you know, relax, read the newspaper, and join my son for fishing later. Because after a six, seven hour drive, you, you want to kind of cool out a little bit and, you know, maybe rest for a half hour, take a little cat nap, eat a little breakfast, read a little newspaper, you know, then you could kind of get into your day, you know. So we were there all day. And then we came back that night. And we left around, we were going to leave around midnight. We wound up leaving around 10 because we were done fishing. At about 4 o'clock, the fish kind of, whatever, they either weren't biting or they just left the canal. I mean, there was nothing going on. We gave it a shot. And then we came back, uh, again, you know, that late night drive back around 10. I was planning on getting back about 3 or 4, so that that works good. Because by the time you get into New York... It's about two and a half, three hours, or maybe three hours, maybe even four hours. Traffic would, would have been gone, you know, from 10 o'clock. I figured we get there around two, no more traffic. But there's always traffic in New York. I mean, this never fails because there's always road work going on. They're fixing the roads. Keeps you alert because you got to really be alert. So that's, that's why you got to drink the coffee. You got to drink the soda, which I did on the way back. Just repeated the same things coming back as I went there. You know, same stuff, you know, in reverse. And man, was there a lot of construction, right? Especially around 15 miles from, from New York City. It was it was like all over the place. It was like you have to go in one lane and then that kind of holds it up for 15 or 20 minutes and then you, you drive good and then it's another slowdown. So I guess it's continual with all the massive traffic. Uh, there's probably... I guess there's 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 traffic all the time because they're, they're just fix just the mere fixing of one lane of a road is going to slow you down for a half hour, and at one point there's going to be that going on you know at one section of this major roadway. So once we got over the bridge, I got a second wind actually. We did one rest stop at um, I think it was around exit at exit 13 one. I don't know what it's called, Grover Cleveland Alexander one. It's the name after President or Vince Lombardi one, one of those. And you know I had my usual um, drink. And I think I might have even had a cheeseburger like three in the morning. And that cruised me home. Once we hit the Garden State Park, we came home. Successful trip. And then as soon as we got home, my son says, you know what? There's a full moon coming in, in a week. Let's go next week. I said, you know what? Let, let me recuperate from this because it's a it, it's a haul. I know people drive to Florida straight through 24 hours. Uh, it's amazing, you know, how they do that. My grandfather used to do that when I was a kid, you know, right through with one guy. I'm going five or six hours and it's, and it's rough, you know. So I guess, I guess people were, were made differently back then, you know. Tough, you know. But, I mean, I did make it. And... Um, Highly recommend it. Cape Cod, good trip. You know, um, it's something that uh, that everyone should see. You know, New England's a great spot, especially in the summer. It's 80, 85 degrees. Night was 73. Not cold. It was warm. It gets an A-plus trip. So that was my, my trip to Cape Cod. And then I'm going to talk about my other pretty cool thing, the power of Twitter and social media. i got a couple of uh, very nice guests, um, basically on Twitter, and I corresponded with a couple people, a couple of high-profile people recently. I got, I got someone nice coming on my show Sunday that's a world-renowned figure, and a little controversial, but I, I kind of bantered with him on, uh, on Twitter, and then I uh, was able to have him come on my show, and it was a pretty cool show we just taped yesterday. And then I got a response back from another fellow that is sort of one of my idols when I was a kid growing up, because he wrote a book, my first book I ever read, on Thurman Munson, and we corresponded back and forth on Twitter, on Gmail, and he's going to be on my show. We're going to interview on Friday, so I'm, you know, we're going to probably show that the following week. And um, I'm 
I'm starting to realize the power of the social media. You know, it really is. It really is something. It's, it's, it's a way to communicate with people and a way to get your ideas out. So, you know, Twitter, all the social media stuff. I know there's some negative stuff too, especially Facebook. Um, but if it's used properly, you could do pretty well with it. You know, you just got to be careful what you say and not get too carried away. Like on Facebook, um, you know, people have these these fights, and it's it's easy to be like a, a text warrior, I guess, or whatever. You know, where you could you could say things you wouldn't say normally in person. So you gotta you got you gotta you gotta temper all that stuff down. And if you use it for business stuff, it, it really is it really is nice, and it's an, it is a nice way to go. And Twitter is is uh, very very powerful because it's only whatever it is eighty two characters or whatever. So it's quick, short. And uh, everyone kind of kind of sees their tweets, you know. You get notified. So that was that was a very positive development for me throughout the last week. Was was this Twitter connection? So I got a couple of nice ones, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming in. My final segment here, I'd like to talk about three things I miss about the NFL from when I grew up. And the you know, NFL is nice now. It's 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 a power game. They changed the rules a little bit because of all the concussions and the uh, CTE, the brain disease, and a lot of old players are getting it because you know they didn't have these protections back then. So that's all good. And I do miss a few things. One, I miss the first thing I miss is the AFL NFL, they, the college all star game they used to call it, which was the defending college champions, say it would be like Nebraska, because they always seemed to be good back then, would play like the ex NFL, the champion of the Super Bowl from the previous year, which say it was the Miami Dolphins in 1972, won the undefeated. So they would play an all star team actually it wasn't the best team of all it was the all-star team of college players so the best college players excuse me i didn't bring my water so i'm kind of went down the wrong pipe so it's the college all-stars against the nfl team and that always intrigued me you know because you had these college guys going against nfl guys you know and i always thought the nfl would kill them but the college guys beat them a couple times including the packers in the 60s the next year the packers won 37 nothing after you know after they got a little bit humiliated but that was always fun just to see how these guys match up against the nfl champs and they would put up a good fight too so you know i mean it was it was in the summer the nfl teams were weren't in you know plenty you know mid-season form so i guess that made it kind of kind of close but they were always always exciting games but they, they discontinued that i think in the 80s for some reason but that was always a highlight it was always like end of summer thing and it kind of it kind of was like a rite of passage that started the nfl season so you know i, I do miss the collegiate all-star game the other thing i miss is i miss those uh, low scoring battles you know back in the 70s there was a lot of 14 3 you know 10 7 17 14 games 21 17 it was it was war it was it was it was it was running it was it was grinding it out in the mud it was the short passing game once in a while you get a hail mary and those games i just love those 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 tight those tight games, you know, those seven nothing games where every point was important. Now, you know, forty one thirty four is almost like a normal score. You know, you get a lot of scoring, which is exciting. One thing I do miss though is those those low, low scoring battles. You know, with those with those tough defensive teams because the defense was like what it was all about back then. You know, the fearsome foursome, the purple people eaters. They, you know, they, they everyone had their own name of of the defense. The no name defense actually was the name of, of the Dolphins. Doomsday defense, the name of the Cowboys. It, you know, it was it, it was cool because they all had their little uh, legendary thing. The fearsome foursome was was the Rams. You know, they had Deacon Jones and all these legendary uh, defenders. You know, these it was it was cool. You know, the, the sacking a quarterback and it was uh, it was a defensive game back then. So I, I missed that. And then I, you know, what I missed too back then. The third thing I missed. Before I wrap up this version of catching up with Ray, is I missed the running game back then because now it's all the passing game. The, the running backs, you, you, you get a few good ones, but back then, like every team had a, like one or two great runners, and a running game was so important, much more important, I believe, than the passing game. Now, now it's the passing game. I mean, it's 100% passing game. You need the passing game. One one quarterback makes the team. You know, like Brady. Brady goes out, and his second stringer comes in. It's not the same team. It was a um, it was a running game back then. Oh, I had some people coming into my office, and I was looking around, and then the door closed. So maybe it was a ghost. But I do miss the um, 
I do miss the running game, and I miss the. Um, I guess that all went into the mystique of the NFL because each team had their own power runner. You know, like Larry Zonka. Larry Zonka. They had, uh, you know, uh, John Riggins. You know, it was all these guys were these. They had fullbacks that were huge back then. Even going back to Jim Taylor. And you know, you had your Walter Paytons. You had your, you know, uh, what's his name? The guy for the Redskins, Larry. Uh, they were. Each team had, you know, Ron Johnson of the Giants, Chuck Foreman of the, of the Vikings. You know, they all had their own, you know, their own runners. And it was cool to watch, you know, because I always liked those power guys, you know, the fourth, fourth and one. And they bring in, like, the refrigerator, Fred Perry, 302 pounds, you know, as a running back. And he powered through for the touchdown. So it was, it was, it was a cool ever for the running game. But, you know, the game evolves, and now it's, now it's passing, and, which is fine, you know. But, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't stop me from missing and those things you know so but i always could reminisce about them and they always got them on youtube you know so that's fine so you know hey i'm looking forward to this season because there's on my next version of catching up with rick i'm going to talk about the things i love about nfl now you know so there are things now that i love that we didn't have back then so we'll talk about all that next week and you know what else we're going to talk about we're going to talk about i don't know yet because there's going to be things happening that are going to be exciting and i'm going to fill you in you know when the time comes next week so we'll see what transpires so until then this is catching up with ray i'll uh, catch you then 